Welcome to A Broad's Way Through Broadway. I'm the broad, Allison Chickerell, and joining me today on this podcast is Gage Patterson. Hi, Gage. Hello. How are you? <laughs> so uh, for those of you who haven't heard us before, uh, Broad's Way Through Broadway, we're just going to discuss different musicals. Each episode, we got a different show to talk about, and uh, Gage and I today are going to talk about the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. It's the longest title of a musical ever. I don't know if ever. that's true. <laughs> it probably is. Maybe. I'm not sure. I should have checked that before we started. I think um, we're good to say that it is. <laughs> I know it's at the top of the alphabet for a lot of like lists of shows mm-hmm. because it starts with a number. Um, so uh, for those of you who don't know, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee um, is <laughs> it's a show about a spelling bee. Go figure. Um, it's a really interesting musical by William Finn, and uh, it features uh, a group of children portrayed by adults traditionally um, due to some content in the show. Adults play these kids who are um, participating in a school uh, school system spelling bee, and uh, the first act of the show uh, involves audience participation. They pull audience members on stage to spell words with the actors, and they get kicked out when they spell a word wrong, just like a real spelling bee, um, all while still moving um, I wouldn't necessarily say a plot line forward, but definitely a lot of backstories about these uh, particular characters, the kids involved in the spelling bee. Um, it's a really, really different, unique show for mm-hmm. sure. Um, in in endless ways, the show is very unique, unique style and and unique. Just uh, the the type of show it is is very different than than your typical musical with the the love between the two characters and the problem that they come into and then they get together in the end. It's, it's nothing like that. (laughs) Um, so, uh, the reason I asked Gage to join us here to talk about, uh, Putnam County Spelling Bee is because Gage was in this production. Um, Gage, what was the, what was the production you were in? When, when, and when, and where was that? I have actually been in Spelling Bee twice. So the first time I was, (laughs) <laughs> the first time I was in it was my freshman year of college at Carthage College. Um, so that was 2014, I believe. And that was and that in that production I played Chip Tolentino. Okay. And then the next time was with the All in Productions performance of Spelling Bee, and I played William Barfay in that yes. one. Yes. So I'm just slowly kind of making my way through every character, every male <laughs> character in the show. <laughs> I am too. Uh, over on my end as well, I have also been in the show twice. I played Marcy Park the first time uh, back at uh, Waukesha Civic Theater. Oh, 2014, I want to say it was. That's probably a fair guess. Um, and then again in uh, 2016 as Olive Ostrovsky. So I too, I, and, and I'm sure, I think this is a pretty common thing for most actors who have been in this show. Would you do it again in a heartbeat? <laughs> yes, always. <laughs> Me too. Um, if this I'm was so- like the only show I could do for the rest of my career, that would be fine. That is 100%. I am not even kidding you. That is exactly what I say and how I feel about the show as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it is my. It would be my favorite show to be in, um, and I, I would be happy to play any role. Every character in the show is so fun. And you can't mm-hmm. say that a lot about a lot of shows. There's, right. uh, there's, there's, there's always very at least few one shows. character. Yeah. Yeah. Where you're and like, I don't really want that one. <laughs> and it's so hard because, uh, having such a blast playing the parts that you already played, it's like, Oh, so I want to do that again. Cause it was so fun, but Oh my gosh, how fun would it be to play this one? I haven't done yet. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So it's, it's a really special show. Uh, William Finn composed the show, um, wrote the, wrote the book and the, the book and the lyrics. The book, music, and lyrics, and uh, really did something super awesome with this show. It's so special. Um, Gage, are you familiar with any other William Finn stuff? Falsettos, New Brain, are his two other big ones. Yes, I've heard of them. I'm, I admit that I'm not like the best actor where I don't like actively <laughs> just listen to shows in the background. I'm usually Shame. listening to podcasts. So you're saying all you have is this talent. One. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> No, but yeah, I've, had, I've heard of a few songs here and there from both of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, it's it's interesting what uh, I I find a running theme for sure that he has, um, particularly in Falsettos, uh, all the the Falsetto trilogy, March of the Falsettos and Falsetto Land. Um, you hear 
you definitely hear spelling bee in there. It's mm-hmm. really, it's, it's really, it's really fun. Um, was so spelling bee the first one? I was like, going to, I'm actually, as I was saying that, I was actually thinking, or do I hear falsettos in spelling bee? Cause I, right. I'd, I'd have to go, I'd have to Google or Wikipedia that to find out which one came first. I think they were mm-hmm. pretty close and I know falsettos has the trilogy. Um, mm-hmm. but, but nevertheless, there's definitely, there's definitely a theme, a theme you hear in there and it's fun music. It's catch, it's catchy music. Yeah. And and clever lyrics for sure. As I said, mm-hmm. he did both the music and the lyrics for that show. Um, this show was nominated for six Tonys, um, and it did win uh, two. It won best book and um, and best uh, actor. The uh, actor Dan Fowler, who played William Barfay, which is one of the characters you played. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a, a, a Tony Award winner for his portrayal of that character. Um, what, tell, tell me a little bit about Barfay. Not that I don't already know, but for anyone who's not familiar with this show, what a fun character to discuss. Yeah, Barfay <laughs> is a lot, you know? He's the kid who's there to win. He has to prove himself because he lost in such a horrible way the year before. How and was that? He had a, it was peanuts. He's allergic to peanuts case Mm -hmm. anyone doesn't know and so he (laughs) had an allergic reaction during the 24th annual putnam county spelling bee and then had to (laughs) be ushered off the stage but this at the 25th he's back with a vengeance he's ready to come back win it all he's he likes to think that he's no nonsense and he's very serious he's not by any means he's kind of (laughs) like your stereotypical like gross shut in he's got all kinds of (laughs) mucus coming out of all over the place and he has his special technique of the magic foot where he just spells the word out in front of him and magic one of the numbers in the show it's such a fun number there's a number in the show called magic foot where we Mm -hmm. see william barfay demonstrate how he spells the words by writing it on the floor with his foot and the uh, the rest of the cast members get up and, and dance through the magic foot with him. It's a fun, really catchy number. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Gage, what was your first, like, do you, do you remember? It's okay if you don't remember, cause I don't know how long ago that you were introduced to the show, mm-hmm. but what do you remember your first impression or your first introduction to, to I the show? I do. I do. My, cause so I'd been, I've been doing, my community theater in my hometown for years. I started when I was six, so I'd been doing it for a long time. I think I was probably around sixth or seventh grade. So they were doing a production of Spelling Bee. Mm-hmm. And I had gone, I go to every show just because, you know, my family likes to go. So we support the theater and get to get some arts education while we're there. So I went not knowing anything about the show at all. And I'm <laughs> sitting there. And you were a sixth grade, seventh grade, sixth or seventh grade. Yeah, I don't think my parents really knew what was going on with Probably the show not. either. But then my dad's name gets called <gasps> to go be one of the guest spellers. Yes. So I was very excited to see him <laughs> pop up there, um, and he did pretty well. I don't think he was the last one, but he was pretty close to being the last one up there. But I immediately just fell in love with the show. How ridiculous it is but also mm-hmm. how relatable each of the characters are it's ridiculous especially but it's to charming. me as a sixth grader at the time <laughs> yeah yeah well so i was like oh okay all right that's super yeah, interesting that's as, a, as a sixth grader and seventh grader too because that actually brings me to, to something else i wanted to talk about this show the content of this show and on a previous episode we talked about uh shrek the musical and how it's it's so nice because it's a family-friendly musical but not mm-hmm. really a kiddie show like there's right. definitely plenty of stuff in there that uh, that audiences of adult age will totally totally be entertained by mm-hmm. whereas spelling bee the title of it is misleading. The title of it Correct. sounds sounds cute, sounds <laughs> yep. cute, and for little kids. And and then when you hear that the the characters are mostly children, um, there's there's the the three adult characters, but then there's the main group of the six kids or mm-hmm. seven, six kids, seven kids, six, six. Kids, that um the six kids that uh, are portrayed by adults, and you think, oh, so. That also kind of leads you to believe that, you know, this is probably a kiddie show, but, Mm -hmm. and and to be fair, uh, plenty of it is. There's totally, there's totally stuff throughout that, that kids would enjoy, but there's there's definitely, (laughs) there's definitely, definitely a number of instances where 
it is not appropriate for where it's not appropriate Correct. for kids. Um, and so it's it's uh, the content of the show and the style of the show is very unexpected. And mm-hmm. it is that kind of show where, like you said, you go in there as with your family as a sixth or seventh grader, not really knowing anything about it, and your parents not knowing anything about it. Um, for those of you who don't know, the, the opening number of the second act of the show is a song called My Unfortunate Erection. So mm-hmm. as a sixth grader, how did your parents <laughs> feel? <laughs> they were kind of like shocked that that, that was happening, mm-hmm. but they were also kind of prepared just based on what had previously happened in the show like uh-huh. they were like okay this isn't a kid's show right but well, it's and, fine <laughs> and lucky for you um you said you've been involved in theater since you were very very young and mm-hmm. um as as we both know with have I've been involved in theater myself since i was very young theater kids grow up differently <laughs> right <laughs> they, yes <laughs> because they uh they have that outlet of being because of their involvement in theater um they they have that uh, subjection. Not. I'm, I'm not saying that all theater kids are subjected to inappropriate things. That's totally mm-hmm. not what I'm saying. But right. um, being surrounded by adults more often, like whereas like most kids after school, you know, will go to soccer practice with other kids their age, and then mm-hmm. you got the theater kid who's like hanging out with you know anyone from you know their age all the way up to 65 years old at right. rehearsal every night. They grow up with a different kind of mature mature maturity. Mm-hmm. Um, I know for me as a theater educator. And having a lot of students, you know, of all sorts of ages like that, and um, the parents asking me, "Oh, do you? What, how do you feel about them seeing this show? What do you do with this show? This show, that show, appropriate for kids?" And I always tell them, "You d- need to decide that because the kids all have totally different maturity levels, especially mm-hmm. especially theater kids. Right. Um, so a theater kid being subjected to Putnam County Spelling Bee at sixth grade." might be mm-hmm. different than a non-theater kid being subjected to the show at sixth grade. There might right. be a different result in how they respond to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and also my parents were very open. You know, they were just yeah. like, this is fun. We're having fun. <laughs> uh-huh. Totally, totally. And it's not like you were like six where then you'd have like right. 25 questions about everything Correct. that I had yeah. to talk about. It was already were, that time. <laughs> right, exactly. Like you said, you probably found it relatable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, Adult, the adults playing kids aspect of this show is 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 super super fun. I know um, it's not the only show that does that. Um, Your Good Man Charlie Brown is also mm-hmm. another you know popular musical um, traditionally performed by adults. Um, uh, in another episode where we talk about that show, we can go into that it is it does also work beautifully performed mm-hmm. by kids um, because that show is a show that's adults playing kids. And it's G-rated the entire time. <laughs> There's right. nothing inappropriate. So it can very easily be translated to to have kids play the roles as well, even though it is traditionally performed by adults. Yeah. Um, it's whereas, a classic whereas, high school staple. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Because I know sure. I did it in high school, and my high school yeah. has recently done it in the past five years again. So, because <laughs> it's because it's very it's very G rated is very appropriate, mm-hmm. and uh, and I mean we did it at the at the box theater, um, the the theater that I work at, and we did it with a cast of uh, age eight to fourteen. Work, mm-hmm. work, work perfectly fine. There's Spelling Bee. As much as I would love to direct Spelling Bee with kids yeah. playing the kids, um, <laughs> teens, teens maybe, teens, teens like, you maybe, know, age, maybe age like you know, fifteen to eighteen. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the parents can sign a little thing or something. So there's nothing like just so wildly inappropriate. Um, there's no like sex scenes or anything like that. Not even right. any like kissing or anything like that. But we do have, um, we do have the one G. Damn it. In mm-hmm. the song, in uh, Pandemonium, where the kids are all just going nuts over their frustrations over um, one of the guest spellers getting uh, getting the word cow, mm-hmm. um, as opposed to uh, as opposed to ompho- omphaloskepsis, mm-hmm. which was the, previous, <laughs> the word omphaloskepsis, and then the guest speller gets the word cow, so it sends them into Pandemonium, um, where they use some foul language, and then there's obviously as we. Um, talked about the the unfortunate erection song mm-hmm. um so with that you know content um i don't know if there's anything else there's that's that's about everything else is pretty tame um yeah there are like a few jokes here and there like a lot of there's a lot of something i noticed there's a lot of subtext yes. in the show in the dialogue and mm-hmm. i think the benefit of having adult actors playing that is they the understand nuances the nuances and the subtext so they can play on these very subtle ideas that are 
maybe it's one line here that makes it seem like Ponch is dating Barfay's mom or something mm-hmm. weird, you know? And yeah. you can like pick up on those little tiny nuances and just really hammer those home. Whereas younger actors who maybe don't have the acting experience or even the life experience just to right. like know what some of these things are might not pick up on those. And it'll be a completely different show. And it always yeah. is. Every time I see it or I've done it, like, yes, the story is the same, but the portrayals of all the characters are always vastly different just based on what that particular actor uh, wants to bring to the table or pulls from like this line or sees in this little hint of the lyrics in the song. So that's one thing I like about it. I've noticed that too, having performed the show in two different productions and then seeing, I saw your production when the one you did it all in when you were Barfay, I saw that mm-hmm. one. And, uh, and you're, and you're right there, there is lots of differences that we go in, in the direction and in just the actor's choices of how to play the characters. Um, uh, we've talked about this in a previous episode too, that there are just so many ways to play a role well so many mm-hmm. ways to play a ro- role right and that's one of the coolest things about you know what we do as actors um and i, I definitely think I, I totally agree with you with adults playing kids in this particular show that does have um more mature subtext and more mature you know kind of underlying things um that the adults can bring that out um whereas uh like you said, it's not even like a kid, like the kids wouldn't have the talent to do it. It's more mm-hmm. of they, they need to really understand um, the subtext and they might not just simply because love lacking that maturity, which will come right. with age. So, um, and that's, and that's really interesting because that, that is what makes this kind of thing different than, like we said, Charlie Brown, where mm-hmm. it's also adults playing kids, but it's completely G rated and totally, totally approachable for kids. Right. They're playing baseball or singing in choir right. or whatever. Yeah. 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 Which is um, normal and, kid stuff. Well, and with this too, it's also the, um, the deliveries that they'd have to do. For example, the, um, the words that, um, Professor Panch, that he's he's the one who, um, for those of you who don't, like, are, again, aren't familiar with the show, he uh, gives the words that the kids need to spell. And he has this book of all these words um, to choose from. And in the first act, before we um, get rid of the guest um, spellers, he can pick, you know, assortment of different words. He can give mm-hmm. them words that have numerous uh, uh, correct spellings if he wants to keep someone up there and they're trying to spell the word wrong so that they can be get so that they can get off the stage because they're done mm-hmm. with their moment in the spotlight. He can <laughs> give them one of their words that that no matter how they spell it, it's correct because the mm-hmm. word can be it's a fake word that can be spelled anyway. There's also um words that are just uh that also have multiple ways of being spelled so he can just say okay you got it wrong and he can you know get them out he also can say some words that um when we ask for the definition or um used in a sentence sometimes his responses uh his examples of the words um for being used in a sentence or uh or being used in a definition are not appropriate. <laughs> right. Or not helpful at all. <laughs> or, well, of course not helpful. That's like super, that's what makes it super funny. Mm-hmm. But are also sometimes, sometimes some of the more adult humor is in those as well. And it's mm-hmm. real. And like you said, it's really, it's really subtle adult humor. It's not stuff necessarily that has like bad language in it or anything like right. that. It's stuff that a kid would just not, not get. It would just go. They wouldn't head. understand it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why um, Pontius, I think is my favorite character mm-hmm. in the whole show, just because they have so much, freedom yes. so like yes they, in the script, the, they basically control the show <laughs> mm-hmm. and in the script there is like a list of words and definitions and sentences but also in both productions i've done you can just throw those out the window and make your own mm-hmm. which is even more fun because you can make it like very specific to the person like if that actor knows the volunteer you can make it very specific to the person or specific yep. to the location so a lot of our sentences for the all in productions one was very milwaukee based and that was yeah. fun ours was ours was too it was very tailored to the people who were brought up and it was very tailored to like wisconsin mm-hmm. you know area and stuff like that it's really important um while we're on the subject of that particular character of professor panch um he or vice principal panch i'm sorry um the 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 casting process for that character is is kind of scary because it's like yes. you need someone who has such a specific talent, not just like, okay, can this actor like 
be funny and memorize lines and be dependable. Like mm-hmm. you, you need someone with really quick improv skills and and mm-hmm. very and very quick to kind of keep up with each performance because each performance is going to be so different depending on which guest audience members you have come up because I'm sure in your experience with doing the show twice I'm sure you you know you obviously had your fair share of the guest appearance uh, the guest audience members who wanted to steal the show yes. and ones uh-huh. <laughs> and and, al- and also ones who were just so petrified and mm-hmm. didn't want to do anything and just sort of were like just meek little shy thing right. and then everyone in between you never really know what you're gonna get um and and punch with having that list of words and basically kind of holding the reins of that first act until mm-hmm. he decides that all these people can be done <laughs> and then the poor other actors the castmates you know the spellers and the and the other characters just <laughs> Like, we just have to wait. Uh, you just have to sit yeah. there and wait. And just stay in character. Mm-hmm. I know I know for me with my experience when I first and I, I first played Marcy the first time I did the show, and I I did not have confidence in myself um on the improv aspect. I mm-hmm. I had only just become familiar with this show right before the auditions. A friend of mine encouraged me to audition and he mentioned like at the audition, he said, do you, you know that there's like improv in the whole first act, right? Cause there's mm-hmm. audience participation and stuff. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> and I was, and I was like, oh, I shouldn't be casting. I'm not good. At, I'm not good at that. And I ended up just trying for it anyway and ended up getting cast and mm-hmm. half, I mean, halfway through the, uh, the performance round, I was like, my, my favorite part of this show is the first act when mm-hmm. all this all this interaction we get to do with the audience member. because once you have your character down the improv came so naturally and right. it was so fun to play mm-hmm. to, that's to what I've noticed script. even like you because after a while you just become so comfortable with the character yes. that you're like I know exactly what they would say or how they would act 100%. so I'm gonna throw in a few lines here and there I know by the end of our run of for all in productions, we were all we all had our favorite lines, and I don't think any of them were scripted lines. No, they were all just they were all the ad libs that had been <laughs> thrown in there throughout the run. Just so because it's such a fun show, and it's not hard by any means. So it's kind of so there are difficult songs, mm-hmm. um, but the rest of it's not necessarily a hard show. So it gives actors the opportunity to kind of just have fun. Yeah. With it, because you know, if you mess up a line or something, yeah, you have it's it's easy to improv your way out or to because it's not really a set structure to the show, right? And the audience can't really story. tell. Mm-hmm. The audience yeah. can't really tell when the actors are are on script or off. So right. that kind of gives us a lot of a lot more liberty and artistic license to to play around as well. And mm-hmm. and like and like you said, yeah, once you have once you have the character down, it's 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 natural. I when I first found out the show and he said improv, I all I thought of was like stand up. I thought of stand up <laughs> comedy and I'm like just walking up to a microphone and just like talking and hoping people think I'm funny. And it's like, mm-hmm. Oh no, no, I, I know, I know how to do a comic delivery. You give me a script and a funny line and I will give you a good, strong comic delivery of that mm-hmm. line, but I can't work from scratch. Right. And turns out you can, as mm-hmm. long as you understand the character. And, right. You and, have a basis for it. Right. And the characters of Spelling Bee, uh, uh, which we'll talk about after our break here, the, the characters of Spelling Bee obviously all have humongous personalities. Mm-hmm. So they're very, very easy to, to grab onto because you have so much that you can play with because their personalities are so big. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, so, th- so that said, I, I think this would be a, a good time to take a break. Um, so when we get back, we can talk a little bit more about the, the characters of Spelling Bee, um, as well as uh, since you and I have both been in this show twice, um, you know, talking a little bit about our personal experiences with playing these mm-hmm. characters, being adults, playing children, getting into um, that that type of mindset of, of stepping into the shoes of a of a quirky little you know ten year old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, after after we uh, come back from our break, we can get into that. Um, so uh, sit tight, and uh, we'll be right back after this word from our wonderful friends at Six Five Media. Welcome to our new podcast. Welcome to our new podcast. This isn't working. Agreed. I think we're going to have to do it. 
turn by turn. Well, now that you mention it, we are a brand new RPG video game podcast. Our very existence hinges on turn-based gaming. So join us on the Turn by Turn podcast, where we'll be talking about Pokemon, Fire Emblem, Golden Sun, Shining Force, Mother, and so many more. It's your turn to come and join us. <laughs> hey, this is TC. And this is Jim from the Studio Demands It podcast. Where every episode we take a demand from a hypothetical studio. Which could be you. And challenge ourselves to conceptualize, pitch, and craft a film based on the stipulations. Or the demands. We are given. We talk about movies all the time. Particularly, we complain about the choices made in the films we've seen. We're nerds like that. And, of course, like any good nerd does, we automatically assume that we could do better. Even with the demands and restrictions that clearly must have been put on by a production. So head on over to StudioDemandsIt.com and listen to our previous library of episodes. Our library of previous episodes. Our precious library, Jim. <laughs> our library of precious episodes. <laughs> You're a pirate Smeagol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So head on over to StudioDemandsIt.com to listen to our library of episodes. And submit your demand for a future episode, too. So go do that. Okay, bye. Okay, end of ad. And we are back with a broad's way through Broadway. I am the broad, Allison Chickerell, and I'm here with Gage Patterson. Hi, Gage. Hello. How was your break? It was good. <laughs> did you travel? <laughs> I did. I, I, I took a little wa- a lap around the apartment, stretched my legs a little. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Gage and I are discussing the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee by William Finn. Six Tony nominations, two wins for Best Book and Best Actor, performed by Dan Fogler. Played William Barfay, who Gage played. That's so mm-hmm. fun. So uh, as where we left off, talking a little bit about this quirky, weird, unique musical. I say weird like it's a bad thing. It's the best thing ever. Um, mm-hmm. Gage and I both agree that uh, having done this show twice ourselves, actually, if... Uh, if uh, we had the option to just to just do this musical the rest of our lives, we both would say hands down, absolutely yes. Uh, such a fun show. Um, so the, every single character in this show is a is an absolute riot. Um, talking a little bit about the characters in this show. Um, so, Gage, you said you played uh, Barfay and uh, Chip. You said correct. Yes. Okay. So, tell me a little bit about um, those. The, well, we talked a little bit about Barfay. Tell mm-hmm. me a little bit about Chip. Um, what's he? What's he like? How's your experience playing playing that uh, character who is supposed to be like twelve years old? I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's Chip's kind of your stereotypical like. Uh, all American. He's supposed to be like the All American Boy Scout. Typically, he's in his you know Boy Scout uniform, and he's like he was last year's champion. So he's coming back with a head full of confidence. <laughs> um, he's very cocky. He's very um, very sure of himself. He all the characters are kind of like a stereotype of something. So he's very much the stereotypical, like I'm the best sort of kid, like, but it's unearned confidence. Whereas yes. Marcy has this, I'm the best because I'm the best, you know, <laughs> but because he's she, just got, because she literally can't do anything wrong. <laughs> correct. But he's just got this air of undue confidence because he won last year, probably due to a fluke because mm-hmm. Barfay got eliminated. Um, but yeah, he's, He's fun. He re- he's the first of the adult actors out, which is mm-hmm. interesting. He throws a huge hissy fit because he won last year. <laughs> um, and that's fun. And then he has his shining moment at the beginning of Act 2 of My Unfortunate Erection, which is it's one of my favorite songs just because it's so ridiculous and out there. And you yeah. also just throw candy at people. And they love it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's real. He's not exaggerating or, or fake. That's a real thing that happens in Act mm-hmm. 2. The, the, the character does actually throw real candy at the audience because he gets put on concession duty after he mm-hmm. gets uh, kicked out of the spelling bee for, for misspelling a word. Um, you know, like they do. In spe- I, don't, yeah. I haven't been to a spelling bee in a long time, but I'm pretty sure that's customary that when yeah. you spell your word My last wrong, spelling bee was <laughs> in second grade, so I don't really know. 
<laughs> yeah, um, it's 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 interesting this um, this show because I the the title of it is is it's it, first of all we like we talk about um, in the first half of the podcast today we talked about that the title is misleading, um, mm-hmm. but it's also it's also very odd. Like you'd think what. What is first of all? Why is this title so long? And right. uh, and second, well, what is this about? Well, of course, it's about a spelling bee, like a musical about a spelling bee. Okay, right. you just trying think. to wrap your head yeah. around that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and it's and it's what I like about it is that it's um it's in real time. The the play mm-hmm. takes place um over the span of about an hour and a half, and the musical mm-hmm. is about an hour and a half. It it starts at a time, and there's no there's a couple of flashbacks and little things like that, but it's yeah. uh we don't there's no change of set. The set is super, super simple. You got bleachers, you got a desk for the two teachers who are reading the words, and you got a chair for Mitch Mahoney, and mm-hmm. you got the microphone where the characters walk up and spell their words and and that's that's about it. Like mm-hmm. it's and that's it. Yeah, it's a pretty much a no budget set because I don't know right. the things I just said. You can pretty much get those things from borrowing, anywhere. from finding anywhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a thirty dollar at at most thirty dollar set right there. So for any theaters listening, if you're not familiar with this show and you have no budget, please um, consider this show. <laughs> yeah, I'll um, do it. I'll come out and audition for it <laughs> <laughs> for sure. You'll have both of us. You have yep. two options at least for two new characters right here who are willing to play any part. Mm-hmm. Um, when uh, the the theater that I work at right now, the Box Theater in Oconomowoc, um, we uh, we produced this show in the very very first show that went up in our space. Um, we gained occupancy the day before uh, mm. we opened, <laughs> um, just on time, mm-hmm. and we literally had a red curtain where the actors behind the red curtain that's that was our dressing area that was our green room and we had the red curtain we we didn't even have bleachers we actually went one step we just had chairs where yep. the spellers would sit and then uh and the uh the desk and a chair for for Mitch the comfort counselor mm-hmm. um and that's that's it that was all we had that's and it. that was that's all, all and need. that was all we needed that was all we needed we had a stellar cast that's that's the only thing you need for this show is a mm-hmm. stellar is a stellar cast yeah it's a very um, character driven show it's you could probably do it with no set at all you know right people just sitting on the ground or whatever like the students just sitting on the floor this is a show that would work um decently as a concert reading because the Mm -hmm. the the meat in this show is in the dialogue and the music and the lyrics and the characters it's not a dance heavy show so it's not like like i saw and there's a there was a concert version of chorus line once and i was like oh interesting kind of (laughs) interesting choice because it's like yeah (laughs) that show is literally known for the dancing yeah Um, it was was still enjoyable because it's still wonderful music but it was Mm -hmm. just sort of like i always think of concert readings of musicals like pick something that isn't known for its big flashy numbers right um and uh, and things like that and and like the uh, the staging of this is um is is very you know in- individualized there's not a mm-hmm. whole lot of physicality to it i suppose barfay yeah. has quite a bit but um, and that's also up to the actor who like yeah. some barfays i've seen are very subtle with their foot sure i would never because you know i like to go <laughs> go big or go home but yeah. like some can be said it's all about the individual approach too. But yeah, yeah, most of the blocking, I can tell you half of the blocking is um stand up, go to the mic, go sit back down. Yep. And I just blocked half of your show for you. You're, You're pretty much <laughs> that's a very good way to put it. Yeah. Any any um any directors out there or, or wannabe directors, um, spelling bee is actually a really nice choice of a show to have mm-hmm. your first directing experience because obviously you want to start you want to start simple. Um, and uh, I tell you, you get a, I mean, this is the, the you know, truth for any show um, that makes a director's job easier. You get a strong enough cast and half your work is done, mm-hmm. um, which is the case, like I said, for any musical, but especially for a show like this, if you're intimidated by, you know, the job of like, oh, staging and, and, and things like that. Yeah, this one's pretty simple because it's pretty, it's like I said, yep. it takes place in real time. And like, and like you said, it just, yeah, walk to the mic, walk back to your chair. And if you mm-hmm. get out, you know, the comfort counselor gives you your juice <laughs> yeah. box and sends you off the stage. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much it. Um, now, the way we talk about it like that totally doesn't make, like, as, as much as we talk about how much we love it and how obsessed we yeah, are Yeah, it doesn't with this sound show, very entertaining. <laughs> We're not making it sound that great. <laughs> but it is. It's all very, like, in the way the characters 
interact with each other. Yeah. So, and the way they interact with the guest audience and Yeah. It's not it's not a show known for its big spectacular dance numbers and stuff. It's known for the way like it's known for the characters. You don't it's really known for the, when you think about the piece. shows, everyone has a favorite character and that's mm-hmm. what makes the show. It's absolutely a, a, a character piece. I uh, I think the characters and I'm not, I'm not I've talked a lot with a lot of people about spelling bee because I'm obsessed mm-hmm. with the show, so I make people talk about spelling bee with me. Yeah. And uh, and and people agree too. It's the, these characters, you don't expect it, especially with with it being adult adults playing kids. Some people have, have a hard time with that, watching mm-hmm. that. Um, but like I said, when you have the right actors, it's it it you you don't care like it's you don't even you're not bothered by it it's very right. very charming you're still able to see these characters and really really care about these characters um i know when i first did the show um well i did the show um the first time and then when i was in it the second time when i found out i was going to be in it again and i went to my friends who over you know the, the last year they had heard me talk about this show so much mm-hmm. they they had heard me been obsessive about this show and that if i could ever do it again and you should do it oh my gosh it's <laughs> it's so it's so funny and it's so charming and it's so and it's just fun it's just mm-hmm. fun and it's like not that i don't have appreciation for like you know hamilton or Les Mis or or little women or shows that have darkness to them mm-hmm. i there's something to be said about something that's just fun. And yeah. that's when they came and saw it. And I think that, I think they thought I was just like overselling it and yeah, maybe, but mm-hmm. they came and saw it. And, um, the, my boyfriend who I was, I, who I was dating at the time, my boyfriend at the time, who was, who's totally, totally kind of a critic about stuff. Like he's mm-hmm. kind of hard to please when it comes to theater. He's kind of, he's kind of got that for lack of a better word, snobby side where he's not mm-hmm. easily impressed. And he was like, I get it. After yeah. he saw the show, he he said, "I stood up, and I feel like standing ovations are cliche and over the top and way too easily earned these days." He's like, "I leapt to my feet." He's like, mm-hmm. "I get what you mean about this show," yeah. and I was so happy because I'm like, "Okay, good. It's not just me. <laughs> it's right. not just me." <laughs> and the show does like, yes, it's fun, but it earns its like one bit of darkness. Yes, and that's. A song that I like, the I Love You song is a yeah, I love you song. thing that I can just listen to over and over and over again. The harmonies are beautiful, just the way it's like written. And mm-hmm. the show earned that. It, it waits until almost the end of the show to have one sort of like dark, sad part. Mm-hmm. So it kind of just takes you by, not necessarily by surprise, but. No, because there's hints leading up to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely. One of my favorite parts, and that's another reason you almost need the adults playing the kids to to grasp capture that. both sides of the of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I I hundred percent agree. I know that when um, myself being a being an actor singer, I consider myself an actor who can sing if you need me to. Mm-hmm. And um, having played, you know, Marcy first, and then getting, and then when I auditioned the second time, I told the director I wanted to play Marcy again because I felt mm-hmm. like I feel like that was most appropriate for me. And he's like, "Cool, I'd like you to actually read for Olive." And I was like, "Okay, are you sure?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'd like to hear you on the I Love You song." And I was like, mm-hmm. "Okay." Uh, I will absolutely because I'm open minded, but as myself for myself as a singer, I just kind of felt like I don't know if I'm yeah <laughs> I don't know if I'm worthy of that mm-hmm. song because of how much I appreciate that song. Like I don't want to make myself hate that like, right. that song, and it ended up going and it ended up going great. It ended up going great, and I and I think because like I said, because I am an actor singer, it. I had only heard it like how beautiful the vocals were that it's almost mm-hmm. like I didn't quite enough have that appreciation for what Olive is going through during that song. And right. because of because I'm an actor singer, I was able to kind of go at it a roundabout way and find my more comfortable version with it. Mm-hmm. Um where it ended up it ended up it ended up going really 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 nicely. And uh my mom obviously who's seen me in you know 150 productions mm-hmm. um this was uh, playing Olive was it was I haven't played many dramatic roles, but this was one of my one of my few dramatic roles. Um, mm-hmm. And it was, it was actually my first time having a straight up dramatic song. And she actually said, "She's like, 
I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> because she'd only ever seen me be a big doofus on stage. Mm-hmm. She'd only ever seen me, you know, play Sally Brown and the, and character a lot a lot of characters like that. A lot of a lot of kind of doofy characters. And mm-hmm. here here comes Olive Ostrovsky with this. Um, for those of you who don't know, Olive, you know, has a has a rough home life where her parents are kind of, you know, negligent of her and 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 not not present and and what that does to her. There's there's hints of possible abuse and things like that. Mm-hmm. And um and what she's going through and she has this vision of her parents telling her that they love her and how that kind of gets in her head when she's spelling and it's just uh it just, it really, really tugs at the heart. And um, being a person who's usually only heavily, you know, emotional about um, animal stuff, <laughs> mm-hmm. I admit yep. that this was one of the first times where I actually felt something so hard for this character and there was nothing dog related mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Just a personal thing of mine. Like, yeah, weird. Oh, people, feeling things big, for people, I don't, I don't get it. Big feelings for, yeah. for this person. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was a, that was, that was an interesting, it was, it was definitely a, a very different kind of role. Like I said, I mm-hmm. didn't think that I was, I, I wouldn't have cast myself at it, but, but obviously, like we said, every character in the show is just such, it's just so interesting, mm-hmm. um, to play. Um, so, uh, we have the, uh, we have Olive, who we talked about and William Barfay and, and Chip Tolentino. We also have, um, uh, talk a little bit about Coney Bear. I know you haven't played Coney oh, Bear, yes. but I bet you would, Coney and I bet Bear. you'd I be would. great. He's <laughs> fun because he's so dumb. Like he's just, <laughs> but he's so sweet. But he's sweet. He's like a he's level. So he's sweet. like he wears his heart on his sleeve, but he's really not smart. And I think he is getting very lucky with mm-hmm. the words that he gets. Yeah. Um, he's, uh, I think he, no, he's, is he a homeschooled kid? If I remember he's correctly, the ho- he's homeschooled. He's yeah. the homeschooled kid. Yeah. He typically has some sort of like puppet or some other entity that takes <laughs> over his body his when finger. he's spelling. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, there's, there's a lot to unpack with him. He's kind of just, <laughs> uh, a lot of character and he's well, just I- fun. And I'll admit, though, I and I don't want to give too much away. I, it's it's hard to talk about this show without like we need to talk about some stuff. We also don't want to give too much away, just in case right. there is someone listening out there who wants to see the show. We don't want to spoil, so I won't spoil by who wins. But I will say that Leaf doesn't win. Um, and <laughs> when and when Leaf Coney Bear, uh, I admit when he gets his word wrong and mm-hmm. and is dismissed. Oh, it's I, so sad. I, I, it's so sad, and I absolutely tear up. Like, oh, honey, sweetie baby, because mm-hmm. <laughs> he's, he's like one of the few characters who's like nice. Like him and Olive hum- are hum- so. He and Olive are humble, nice and humble. Whereas the rest are so much, and they're so. I'm going to win at any cost, even if I have to like kill mm-hmm. you as a child. You know, mm-hmm. they're so. And yet somehow we still blood. root for them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> That's the joy of theater and like these strong actors who can do mm-hmm. these is that even these characters who have unlikable qualities, but for some reason you still want more from them and you mm-hmm. still don't want them to spell the word wrong because you don't want them to go away. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's so funny. Um, well, listen, we are almost out of time here. Um, is there anything else that you, uh, would like to share about spelling bee, about your experience with it, or about the show in general, anything like that, um, with with this particular crazy, crazy show that yep. for people who listening who don't know anything about it and have only listened to us talk about it are probably mm-hmm. confused. Yep, but they're also <laughs> very excited to see it at some point. <laughs> uh, one thing I just want to tell a story from the first time I did it. Um, mm-hmm. I was playing Chip. And I was rehearsing, we were in college, I was rehearsing in one of our recital halls, and we were doing My Unfortunate Erection, obviously. So I'm singing about my erection, running around. <laughs> All of a sudden, our um, the head of the music theater department brings in a prospective student and oh. her mother in to watch our rehearsals and I am singing about my erection and all of a sudden I turn around and I lock eyes and I was just so embarrassed but I had to keep going and I was like of course they come in at this exact moment but she did end up coming right any other time would have been great but she did end up coming to the show uh, or coming to the 
school. So okay. it must have worked somehow. I don't know. But that's just one memory <laughs> that I always associate with spelling bee anytime I talk about it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. Well, listen, this was, this was really, really fun. Uh, thank you everyone for listening and thank you Gage for joining me to talk about spelling bee. Thanks for having uh, me. Absolutely. Would love to have you back sometime. If there's any other show that we both uh, share a mutual passion for like this, mm-hmm. one, probably not quite as much as spelling bee. I don't bee think as I have a both passion admittedly for anything as much as this. No, <laughs> me neither. Me neither. But it was, this was really fun. Um, We'll just do some social stuff real quick. You can like and subscribe to us on iTunes, Google music, Google music and Spotify. Um, you can find me on Instagram under Allie.chick or um, the Box Theater Company also has the Instagram. That's where more of the theater stuff goes if you're interested in learning more about my theater organization. Um, and that, I think, does it for today. Thank you all for listening and thanks, Gage. Um, I'm Allison Chickerell taking a final bow for the Broadway through Broadway. See you guys later. Bye.